Hello there my beautiful friends. Today I have a very exciting and very different video coming at you. Kind of a weird topic, right? But if you are interested in seeing what these eyeshadows are all about, seeing these eyeshadows that I made myself, and seeing them swatched, then go ahead and keep on watching and let's jump right on in. So as I stated, these are all eyeshadows that I have personally made myself, which is kind of a weird statement. Now, I am not a makeup creator. I'm not a makeup brand. I'm not somebody who knows what I'm doing when it comes to making eyeshadows. I literally just do it as a hobby. If you have been here since the beginning of my channel when I started about two years ago, one of the first things I did here on my channel was do something called Mad Science Makeup, where I basically mixed together a bunch of different makeup that I owned to try and replicate a product that I was wanting, that's why I didn't have to spend the money on it. And while I don't make those types of videos anymore, I have still been doing it in background and making my own shadows, making my own highlighters, making my own blushes, simply because I find it super, super fun and I don't like to spend a whole lot of money on makeup these days. So if I can make it myself, then I am a very, very happy girl. I'm not gonna be going over with you guys what I put into these shadows and like the measurements and what not because like I said I am not a makeup chemist I have legitimately zero expertise when it comes to making makeup I'm just doing it for fun as a hobby for myself and I would not feel comfortable giving you guys these recipes if you even want to call them that because they're truly not they're just kind of a mashup of makeup that I already own and then some pigments that I buy online so this video is just for fun I just want to show you guys my personal favorite nine shadows that I've made so enough chit chat here, let's go ahead and jump in. So obviously these guys are not going to have names because I made them myself. I guess I could name them, but I've never really thought about doing that. Nonetheless, this is a shadow that I made recently and it's kind of like a spicy peach, if you will. It has a bunch of micro shimmers in it. It has a little bit of pink, a little bit of gold, a lot of peach, and even a little bit of red. I've mixed together a bunch of different things to get this color. I really wanted a beautiful rose gold with a bunch of micro shimmers. And honestly, this is one of my favorites that I've ever made. And and I don't think I've mentioned this yet, but I probably have like 50 plus eyeshadows that I've made myself just because I like to do it when I'm bored. Nonetheless, this is such a pretty sparkly shadow and it has a decent amount of base pigment. A lot of the shadows that I make do not have a lot of base pigment. I like to make sheer toppers because you know me and you know I love sheer toppers. But this guy definitely has that really pretty peachy rose goldy kind of burnt peach undertone. And I really wanted to have a shadow like this in my collection and I didn't really have anything like it. So of course, I made it myself. Now this next guy right here, I have made like probably 10 variations of this formula, color, whatever it is. It is such a pretty light baby cool toned pink with silver shimmers, even a little bit of gold shimmers kind of thrown in there as well. This is a really sparkly pink kind of toppery eyeshadow. I absolutely love it. And I know I'm gonna sound like I'm kind of talking myself up here and patting myself on the back for making these, but I think they're cool, okay? I like the way they turned out. As you can see, this guy has a decent amount of base pigment to it as well. So that was pretty cool. I wasn't really expecting it to have that much base pigment because this guy is meant to be a topper, but you definitely have that cool tone baby pink action in the background and you have those gorgeous sparkles. And this is my favorite kind of eyeshadow to have and to wear. Hands down, you probably already know that. And like I said, I've probably made 10 different pans of eyeshadow that are just a hair different. They're all along the lines of this type of shadow and this type of color. I absolutely love them and I cannot have enough. Now, this next guy is very, very unique for me because I don't really own any shadows that are quite like this. I think Cleona has a shadow, I believe it's called Corrosion, but I might totally be making that up right now. They have a beautiful shadow that's very similar to this, but this is like an olivey orange green, if you will, with a bunch of gold shimmers. It has almost an orangey gold shimmer running throughout it, so it's pretty unique. Now, I've seen a lot of olivey greens before, but I haven't really seen a whole lot with a more orangey, warm-toned shimmer running throughout it. This isn't a color that I would wear that often, but I think it's really pretty. As you can see, this is about two layers built up here, so it is a little bit more sheer. Although, I kind of like that because if I want to, I can sheer it out to make the look a little bit more goldy, and if I wanted to pack it on and make everything a bit more green, I could do that. I really like colors that you can kind of pick and choose which color you want to really shine 
shine through and be the prominent shade. Next up, we have another variation of that original pink I showed you, but as you can see, this guy is much more Barbie warm, kind of Malibu pink, if you will. It's not quite hot pink, but it has a little bit of hot pink kind of undertones running throughout it. As you can see, we have those beautiful silver shimmers running throughout it, but I put in some red shimmers and some pink shimmers just because I wanted something more warm toned, but it was still along the same line as that pink from earlier, the cool toned baby pink. This guy is just a touch deeper, a touch more pigmented, and of course, quite a bit warmer as well. It's more of a bubble gummy kind of pink. I love colors like this. You know I love baby pinks and I love kind of mid-toned warm pinks as well. I honestly can't choose between the two of them. They're like neck and neck for my favorite type of shadow. I have a bunch of shadows from brands, brands that I absolutely love and adore that have shades that are pretty similar to this. So I was pretty, pretty happy, if I do say so myself, with the outcome of this just because it looks very similar to things that I've spent my money on. So I was happy that it turned out the way it did. I think this is definitely one of my better shadows and of course, it's pink. What's not to love about it? So now we have one of the highlighting inner corner brow bone shades that I made. I wanted to make a very pink based kind of opalescent white shade that's very reminiscent of a particular shade from a Tom Ford quad. I believe it's called Pink Fire Opal and I purchased that. It was $90 for four freaking shadows. The shade in there is beautiful, granted, but is it worth the money? Absolutely not in my opinion because I was able to make something very, very close. Is the Tom Ford shade better? Yes. Is this shade similar? Also yes. I've used this guy as a brow bone highlight and an inner corner highlight before and it's pretty intense. I probably layer up about two layers of this to get to full opacity because it is a little bit more sheer upon first application. But I mean, I don't mind going in with a second layer if it means I'm not spending 90 bucks on an eyeshadow, even though I already did. So what was the, really the point of that? I don't know. Just for fun, I suppose. This entire video was just for fun, so don't take anything I'm saying too seriously here. But nonetheless, I was really happy with this shadow and I think that I replicated that Tom Ford shade pretty decently. And my boyfriend just walked in and handed me a milkshake out of the blue, so you could say I'm having a pretty good night over here. But this next shade is something that I've seen a bunch of indie brands do, this beautiful fairy kind of cool toned pinky purple with silver shimmers and lilac shimmers and even some blue shimmers in there as well. I have a few shades like this from a bunch of different brands, honestly, and I kind of just wanted to replicate it to see if I could make something similar, and I think I got pretty close to some of my favorite purples that I own. I love how shimmery I was able to get this eyeshadow. As you can see, there's a bunch of different multicolored shimmers in there, but the prominent shade is almost like a teal blue, if you will, which really does contrast nicely to that kind of warmer, lilac-y, pinky purple base, if you will. This guy has a decent amount of base pigment to it, and I was very happy happy about that because I kind of struggle with getting these shadows to actually have a base pigment because it's kind of difficult because I don't really know what I'm doing. So I was a pretty happy girl after seeing the outcome of this guy. Not all of my purples have turned out like this. I've had many failed purples in the past. I could not tell you why for the life of me, but I was very happy that finally out of all the attempts, I was able to get a very pretty fairy duo chromey purple that was very reminiscent of some that I already own from some of my favorite indie brands. So we're gonna go ahead and switch gears here with a deeper toned shadow, finally. This guy is definitely deeper than the rest that I've shown you thus far, but it's not super deep by any means. As you can see, this is a really pretty kind of rosy berry shade, but I decided to add a little bit of orange in there because I wanted something that was a bit warmer, and I knew I wanted a berry with that rose gold because berries and rose golds are absolutely beautiful together and just create a duochrome effect on the eyes. But I wanted something a bit warmer than just a typical berry shade. I didn't want anything too purpley, so I thought that going the mauve kind of orangey route would be a good idea. Now, as you can see, she's a little bit chunkier than the rest of the shadows I've shown you thus far, which, like I said, I don't personally mind that. I think it's pretty, but some people might not like the shadow because of that. Now, I put in some mauve toned kind of chunky glitters, if you will, but they're not overly chunky by any means. They're just a little bit more intense than just your standard shimmer. As you can see, there's like a big fleck of it right there on my wrist. 
kind of looks really terrible in the actual swatch but in person this guy's really pretty and i wanted something that was berry toned but wasn't super purpley or cool toned and although she's a little chunky i think that she is beautiful so speaking of rose golds i wanted to create something very similar to that first og shadow that i showed you but I wanted something much lighter and I wanted something a bit more orangey and peachy and kind of summery, if you will. And I created this guy. This guy reminds me of a specific shadow from Touch of Glam Beauty. I cannot remember the name of it for the life of me right now, but it is a beautiful trichromatic, peachy, orangey, kind of sunsetty type of shadow that even has a little bit of purple in it. I was trying to encapsulate what I saw in that shadow, just minus the purple. I wanted something rose goldy with a hint of peach and a hint of warmth and a little bit of gold shimmer. As you can see, the base pigment of this is pretty strong and it's not overly shimmery. Now, as far as formulas go, out of all the ones I've shown you so far, this shade is probably the most like a traditional eyeshadow, like an eyeshadow that you'd get in a palette. It's not super sheer, it's not super chunky, it goes on pretty smoothly, so I was impressed with this formula. Now, if only I could actually remember what I did to make this shadow. That's the true tragedy here, folks. And last, but certainly not least here, folks, we have a shade that is yet again another brow bone highlight or a face highlight, inner corner highlight, whatever you want to do with it. This shade is very similar to the pink one that I showed you earlier, although this is just like that shade but flipped on the opposite spectrum of things. That shade had a white iridescent base with a pink and almost gold reflect, and this guy has a white iridescent base with a gold and aqua cool toned reflect. So this guy is very icy without being too overly cool toned because of of the gold shimmers that I put in there. You know me, I don't like anything that's too crazy cool toned, so I wanted it to be a white iridescent shade with just a touch of blue. I'm gonna be honest with you here, I don't personally wear shades like this very often. I somehow find myself purchasing shades like this online quite often because they're so stinking beautiful online and in person, they're absolutely beautiful. But I'm just not the kind of girl that's gonna gravitate towards an aqua blue inner corner highlight or an aqua blue face highlight this is not really my gig I'm a little bit too yellow toned and warm toned for that but I could see a bunch of people liking a shade like this and I have a bunch of shades like this in my collection already granted the formula on those is significantly better than the formula I got on this guy because she is very very sheer but I think as a topper this would be absolutely beautiful All right, friends, now it's time for my favorite part, some swatches. So go ahead and kick back, relax, and enjoy. All right, folks, now it's time for my favorite part, the arm swatches. So go ahead, kick back, relax, and enjoy. Alright folks, but that is going to be wrapping up today's video. I really, really hope that you enjoyed watching today. I know it's something a little different, but like I said, I make these all the time in my spare time. I have a bunch of them, so if you want to see another video like this, a part two, if you want to see my highlighters that I've made, then let me know in the comments and let me know in the comments if you've made eyeshadows yourself or if you liked any of these shadows, if they reminded you of any specific shades that you know of, let me know in the comments. I'm curious. But like I said at the beginning of this video, this is strictly for me, for fun. I would never sell these to anyone or do anything of that nature. These are legitimately just something I like to do on the weekend when I'm bored and chilling at home, eating my popcorn and whatnot and mixing up eyeshadow. If you want to do this at home, I highly suggest watching YouTube videos on it. There is a bunch here on YouTube. I highly suggest you do some research into it. If you are to do something like this at home, if you want to make your own makeup, 
please, please, please just be hygienic and clean because nobody likes having an eye infection and nobody deserves to have an eye infection over makeup. I'm sure there's a bunch of other things that could go wrong if you use dirty tools and just aren't clean about things. So please, if you're gonna do something like this, please be clean. I cannot stress that to you enough. But after my little spiel and my little rant there about cleanliness, I can't help it. I'm a dental assistant. This has been installed into my brain by this point. <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and hop off here. But I really really hope that you enjoyed today's video and if you want to see more like this please do let me know because I am more than happy to bring you guys this type of content I had so much fun filming this and of course I have so much fun making these types of things so let me know and if you are not already subscribed and you enjoyed today's video and you want to see more like it then go ahead and hit the subscribe button down below this way you can stay in the loop for when I post but with that being said I hope you are having an absolutely amazing and beautiful day wherever you are and thank you so much for joining me here today. I hope to see you next time. Bye!